this is how you can qualify for business funding even if your personal credit is currently horrible. So I know most people say this can't be done, but there are certain strategies that will grant you access to this funding. So I'm going to dive into it, show you exactly how it works, how I was able to qualify for this funding, the different mistakes I made so you can avoid them and get results faster. So basically, this is a cheat code that allows you to qualify for over $10,000 of business funding by leveraging the profile on your business. So this is actually completely separate from your personal credit report, but you need to actually build a strong enough business profile so that the banks actually weigh this heavier without having to actually rely on your personal credit. Because whenever the banks actually lend to you, they're making an investment into you and your ability to pay back the loan. So you need to actually have some kind of history to show them. So typically, they'll actually look at the business owner to see exactly how you handled your personal credit. So what types of accounts you had, how much utilization you were using, and your overall payment history to actually determine how you might perform with business funding. But if you're able to build a strong enough business profile, the banks could potentially use that as an encompassing business analysis to figure out exactly if you would be strong enough of a candidate to qualify for the funding without even caring about the personal credit. So let's dive in. So first, I'd like to talk about the difference between your personal credit and your business's credit because your business does indeed have its own business credit profile. So the difference here is that your personal credit will be attached to your social security number. So with that, you have your entire history attached to it. You'll be generating different FICO 8 reports that are produced by the different credit reporting agencies, such as Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. And you'll be able to see all the different factors that influence your credit. So for personal credit, the most important factors are what types of accounts you have, your overall payment history if you pay on time, the new accounts that you have, as well as how you use your accounts. So the utilization percentage. If you use too much of the available credit and you leave a balance on there, the different credit bureaus will actually seriously penalize you and drop your credit score very fast. So this is a very big difference with business credit. So with business credit, your entire profile is attached to your EIN number, the employer identification number. So with this, the actual most important factor for business credit is really just payment history, to be honest with you. There are a couple of different smaller factors involved, but really at the end of the day, this is the most important factor. And a big difference between personal credit and business credit is that utilization factor. So for personal credit, the utilization makes up 30% of your overall score. So again, if you max out different credit cards, it's going to drastically drop your score. And a quick example here is that if you have a personal credit card with a $1,000 limits, if you use $1,000 and you leave a balance of $1,000, you're 100% maxed out and your score will probably drop immediately about 80 points, which is really quite drastic. But for your business, if you have that same limit, $1,000, which on a business that's a really small limit, typically they lend a lot more to businesses, but if you had that same limit on a business and you also carried a thousand dollar balance and left it on there, they actually wouldn't really penalize you at all. And that's because the most important factor for banks when it comes to businesses is your actual ability to basically pay the loan. And that's because for businesses, they have a more longer term view. For personal credit cards, these are typically for consumers. You're using this to buy a TV, a purse, some new AirPods, groceries. So this is for consumer spending. But for business and business credit cards, these are actually used to grow a business, generate some revenue, make a profit. And so the banks have a longer term view because most of the time they're using this to actually invest into their business, run some ads, grow their team to eventually pay back the loan. So they do have a longer term view. So they don't really care so much about your utilization factors, which also means that even if you have certain banks that have maxed out credit cards on the business side, you could actually continue to get more funding. But basically that's the difference between your personal credit and your business. And as I mentioned here, the goal is to qualify for some business funding by leveraging your business credit profile while disregarding your personal credit. So now we have to focus on your business credit profile, and try to make that as strong as possible. So to build your business credit profile, you need to actually establish your business foundation. So to do this, let's start by establishing your actual business entity. So this means starting an LLC, a C Corp or an S Corp. You can do this by registering online with your state or by using different websites available. These really just make the process easier, and potentially faster. I recommend Northwest Registered Agent. I have a video training above here that'll walk you through that. 
but you need to establish your entity. Then you go and get your EIN number, which is again, that social security number version for your business. You want to get your DUNS number as well. And then you open up your different business assets. So we have your business email, your business phone number, as well as your business website. So basically establishing your business, having all the different assets that make you look professional and presentable to the banks. But overall, this entire process can be done really quickly. The longest might be actually establishing that LLC because the state needs to process your new entity. So it could take a couple of days to maybe a week or two, but you can get everything else knocked out within a day or two, have everything established. I have some clients that actually get this entire thing done in a couple hours. So just up to you to just knock everything out and get it done. But once you have this, now you have your business foundation established. You can use this to then build further. The beautiful thing is that, again, this is his own entity. So basically just gave birth to a person. So now it can actually sign contracts, it can borrow, it can purchase property. So this is a beautiful thing about funding as well as that you can actually do this multiple different times and give birth to multiple business children, I guess, right? So with a business, you have the entire business borrowing profile attached to the EIN number. Whereas for your personal credit, that's attached to a social security number. So unless you found a strategy on your own or you're probably maybe doing something illegal, you can't actually establish multiple different social security numbers. But for a business in the EIN, you can easily start multiple different LLCs, get an EIN number for each one, build up this business credit, the borrowing profile, and actually do this entire funding process multiple different times. So the funding process to talk about in this video with the no PG lending, but also the higher lending that you can qualify for once you have good personal credit. But overall, this entire process can be done multiple different times because you have everything attached to that entity and to the EIN number. So a lot of different strategies involved with getting business funding. But let's dive into actually getting qualified for this funding. So this is funding that you can qualify for regardless of what your personal credit currently looks like. So even if you have collections, charge-offs, a whole lot of inquiries, you can still qualify for this funding. And basically for these first ones here, these are going to be what we call subprime lenders. So you can still qualify for this funding even if your LLC is under two years old and even if you have bad credit. So some of these lenders are going to be Stripe, Square, QuickBooks, and Cabbage with a K. So these are basically credit card processors that you can receive transactions from. So if you're having different payments coming in from vendors or clients, customers, they're paying you and you can process these payments through these different companies and they now offer lending services as well. So they actually lend to you because they're making money on these transactions. So whenever you start to process payments, you'll notice that they're actually collecting about 2.9% on every single transaction. And for them, this adds up quite a bit. These companies make a whole lot of money. They have a lot of cash and reserves, and now they're starting to lend that cash out to make even more money. But this benefits you because now you can take advantage of these products. So typically, they actually want to see transactions for about three months, and you can actually manufacture these transactions. So I had a client about six months ago who had really bad credit. He was probably under 600 score and he had a brand new business. He didn't really have so much going on just yet, but he was in the early stages. And so he was actually sending out different invoices and getting paid and creating these transactions. And eventually after a couple of months, he qualified for $10,000 of funding, which he then used to scale his marketing and grow his business. But he was able to do all this within three months after establishing his entity and doing the right steps but this was totally doable even with his poor credit report. So these are really strong opportunities for you. You do need to make sure that, again, you establish that strong entity, and then you need to establish a business account with these companies so they have different options of accounts. Make sure you actually start with a business account with these companies. You start to generate these transactions, and then eventually they'll either offer a loan to you or you can simply reach out and ask for one. Yeah, these are really great offers because it's no personal guarantee. So your credit is really not even a factor when it comes to the lending decisions. It will be based on the transactions. You don't need a whole lot of transactions either. If you just want to see some kind of volume coming in, then after about three months, you can qualify for these loans. So the next option here is going to be a secured savings account loan. So these are going to be backed loans that you basically guarantee with assets provided. 
So whenever you open a business checking account, you also have the option of opening up a business savings account. So basically, if you have any money laying around, you could potentially put it into one of these business savings accounts and you could borrow against that money. So the purpose here is that you're able to qualify for funding very easily because you're backing the loan. And since you're backing the loan, the banks basically don't really care what your personal credit looks like, because if you were to default on the loan, they would just take whatever's in your savings account. So it's really easy to qualify for. Your personal credit really is not a factor. Most major banks offer this product as well. And typically, whatever you deposit into the account, you can borrow against. So we have some clients that just did this last month. They deposited around $5,000 and they borrowed $5,000. So it's a really great advantage if you have, again, some money maybe sitting around and you want to leverage it. And now you can have extra resources to borrow and scale your business. So the next one here isn't exactly business funding, but it does allow you to build up your business credit profile and ease your cash flow. So these are net 30 vendors. Certain online retailers allow you to buy now and pay later. And since you're purchasing something and using the product before you actually pay for it, this is creating a debt. And then once you pay off that debt, now you're showing on time debt payments. So these are really great. Again, if you want to build up your business credit, you can build it up really fast as well through these different vendors. And I really recommend it to build that profile because eventually if you have a strong enough profile, lending becomes so much easier and you can qualify for more sophisticated lending options on your business without ever having to personally guarantee. So for most of my clients, I recommend taking this step of building up the business credit through these net 30 vendors just so that we can continue to make progress. But I actually created an entire video training on net 30 vendors. I'll drop that link here above. But overall, my most recommended ones will be Quill, Uline, and Granger. Very easy to use. Make sure you make a purchase of at least $80 so that the debt is significant enough to actually show. I also recommend actually waiting about 20 days before paying it off again so that it's actually lasting long enough to be significant to then show. But these are really great options. There are a lot of different vendors out there. So even if you're running a business that does print on demand, for example, certain vendors would allow you to buy now. You could then acquire the product, sell the product, and then pay them back. So certain business models can actually grow infinitely with this, but overall, it's just a great way to, again, ease cash flow and build up that profile. So these net 30 vendors would be the first level here of building up your business credit. The next one would be getting gas cards. So these are actually a little bit more sophisticated type of business credit products. So we have Chevron, Texaco, and Fleet Cars. So these are business credit cards that are a little bit more than net 30 vendors, but not quite the 0% chase bank of america cards so you basically start with the net 30 vendors get gas cards and then you'd maybe level up to the different amazon and walmart business cards so that you can then hit the next level and as you start to add more accounts there's more sophisticated accounts you have more on-time payments eventually with your business you could qualify for these really awesome different business credit cards that have the zero percent offers that offer points and cash back rewards with all the major banks like Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, US Bank, you could qualify for these without having to even use your personal credit. But I would say this is a long-term game to actually achieve that level, just because most banks will want you to be established for at least two years and have a really strong business borrowing profile before you can actually start to get these no PG loans or business credit cards. But overall, I would say it's a long-term goal just because, again, why not leverage these different debt products and create such a strong business profile so you can qualify for funding and a lot of it whenever you need access to more capital. It just makes growing your business so much easier and lifts the burden off your shoulders of having to use savings all the time. But that's basically it. Hopefully, this opens up your mind here to some different ideas that exist as far as getting access to extra capital for your business. There's always a solution to every single problem. So even if your personal credit's kind of down in the dumps right now, you can still qualify for some funding. And so these are great options. If you wanted to qualify for some funding a little bit faster and you wanted to maybe skip the credit repair process, maybe you're doing that right now. But I would say I always recommend fixing your credit because it's such a strong or crucial part of your financial foundation regardless. This will actually be the determining factor when it comes to how much you pay in interest and whether you even get approved or not. If you want to buy a car or buy a home, this is what's going to be needed when it comes to actually qualifying for that. 
So I always recommend fixing your credit. If you need help with this, check out the different videos here on my YouTube, or you can even check out my free course that I have as well. You can find the link for that down below in the description, but hopefully this video helps you out. If you have any questions here about this entire process, just drop it down below. Also, let me know if you like these videos that are a little bit off the beaten path here so we can dive into some more different types of strategies as well. But if you like this and you want to learn more about business funding and growing your business, be sure to follow and add as a subscribe here so you can learn more about all this stuff and grow on this journey with me here. But I appreciate you. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you soon.